Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to be going over several examples uh, of how to draw uh, Lewis structures for various uh, substances, various uh, formulas, various uh, molecular uh, compounds. Um, <clears throat> I'm probably going to do this over uh, two or three different videos, um, but I'm going to be going over all these examples to show you uh, in many different ways uh, how to follow the steps to get to your uh, proper or at least a legitimate Lewis dot structure. Now, one of the things I'm going to say, and I've said it before, is um, there are going to be Lewis dot structures where they don't follow the octet rule. You're going to have uh, structures where you have what is called an expanded octet, where you have more than eight electrons around your uh, atom or you might have less than eight electrons around your uh, atom and it'll be okay <clears throat> and those are exceptions to the rule and I will deal with those in uh, later videos. In this video I just want to focus on the basic steps and, and, and how to get a legitimate Lewis dot structure. It may not be the best Lewis dot structure but it will be a legitimate Lewis dot structure that allows every atom in it to have an octet or a duet <clears throat> and so that's the uh, that's the goal and so uh, I'm going to start with uh, carbon dioxide um, uh, so actually yeah I'll start with carbon dioxide so uh, with carbon dioxide <clears throat> again the first step is going to be you're going to uh, <clears throat> write out count up the valence electrons the total number of valence electrons <clears throat> So for carbon, carbon, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for carbon, uh, carbon is in uh, the fourth uh, group. So that means it has four valence electrons and we only have one. So that's four. And oxygen is in uh, group six. So it has, <coughs> it has um, six valence electrons. So I have two of them. So that's going to be, uh, two times six and that gives me 12. So <clears throat> four plus 12 gives me 16 total valence electrons. Those 16 and only those 16 am I allowed to use to create my Lewis dot structure. And so now that's the first step. The second step is to draw my skeletal structure. I need to determine what my central atom is going to be. And as I said, usually it's the first one and it's usually the first one is the least electronegative atom, which is usually the one that's going to be your central atom. Um, also, if you draw the Lewis uh, dot symbol for carbon, it has four, four unpaired electrons, whereas oxygen has two. So carbon has more uh, uh, pairs uh, or uh, more unpaired electrons to bond up. so that's going to be so carbon is definitely going to be our central atom here so carbon is our central atom which means that the two oxygens all the other atoms which is just two oxygens is bonded to your carbon so we're going to draw that structure our skeletal structure with carbon as our central atom and then the two oxygens are bonded to that central atom. So, so now I got my skeletal structure, I got single bonds uh, bonding everything together. So I'm going to start with single bonds and maybe later, depending on the molecule, I might have to use double or triple bonds, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, so I'm using, I'm start with only single bonds. So how many electrons do I have to use for each single bond? Two, because you are sharing two electrons for every bond. So how many bonds do I use? I use two. So two times two is four. So I had to use four electrons to create my skeletal structure. So I have to subtract from 16, four, and that leaves 12 electrons left over. So now I have 12 electrons to, to use. So this, the, the third step is uh, you're going to give uh, lone pair electrons to your outer atoms first 
so that they can have an octet. So I have 12 electrons left over, so um, oxygen is already bonded here. So <clears throat> that's two electrons shared. So those two electrons belong to the oxygen. So I need three more lone pairs to put on this oxygen. So I put one, two, and three. So that's got three. And I do the same thing for this oxygen. One, two, and three. Okay, so how many electrons did I have to use? I used one, two, three pairs there. One, two, three pairs there, six pairs, that's 12 electrons. So I have to subtract that from my total that I have left over, and I have no more, no more electrons to give. So now I need to double check my Lewis stop structure and make sure everyone has an octet uh, or a duet. And so I'll, again, I'll notice that uh, my oxygens have uh, one, two, three pairs, plus a pair there in my bonding electron, in my bonding pair, so that's going to be eight. And this oxygen has one, two, three lone pairs, that's six, plus the two in the bond, that's eight. So <clears throat> this oxygen has eight. Now, if I look at my carbon, I have a bond and I have a bond. So this carbon is sharing two electrons in each bond, so it has four. It needs four more electrons. I don't have four more electrons to give. So what do I do? So that means I go to the next step, which is I need to move electrons, I need to move lone pair electrons from my outer atoms to create more bonds that can be shared between um, this atom and the central atom. So, <clears throat> so I can take this bond here and move it there. Or I can take this lone pair there and move it there, create a bond. Now, um, it'll look like this. So I have this, oops, let me write that better. So I'll have a double bond there with carbon. And then I'll have my single bond on this place here. Single bond. So now I have three bonds, which means that carbon now has uh, six electrons, but no octet. So I need to do this again. Now, I could do it here, right? I could create a triple bond, and I could do oxygen with a triple bond carbon, and then I have oxygen there. That, that seems like a legitimate Lewis dot structure, but it, it really isn't. I mean, it's legitimate in the sense that now everyone's happy with a full octet. Um, but this violates uh, bonding patterns. <clears throat> now, I'll go over bonding patterns uh, in a little bit. Well, I'll go over it now a little bit. Um, bonding patterns are the patterns that you will normally have, see um, regarding um, particular elements. They like to be bonded at certain times and they like to have a certain number of lone pairs. Oxygen's bonding pattern is that it likes to bond twice, either a double bond or two single bonds, but it loves to have two bonds and two lone pairs. Sometimes it will have one bond and three lone pairs, um, but you, and sometimes it'll have a triple bond as well, but that's not, it's not what it normally likes to have. So technically this would be a legitimate one, but um, this is not likely to be seen. The other option, <clears throat> the other option is to take the lone pairs here and move them there, create another double bond there. So then you'll have carbon with a double bond there. And you'll have a double bond here. So now you'll see that carbon has four bonds, two here, two here, so that's an octet, two bonds per, or two electrons per bond. Uh, so a carbon is good with its octet. You have two bonds 
or four electrons being shared between carbon and this oxygen, and you have two lone pairs, so four and four is eight, and again, four and four is eight. So everyone is now happy with an octet. Now here, everyone was happy with an octet too. So in a way, this is a legitimate Lewis dot structure, but energetically, it's really not gonna be favorable. Um, <clears throat> In a later video, I'll talk about formal charges and how you can use formal charges to uh, see which one of these is really the better Lewis dot structure. But for now, you might say, okay, well, they're both, they both follow the rules. So as far as the rules go, um, the steps, you, this one is legitimate and this one is legitimate. The problem with this one is that uh, it doesn't follow your typical bonding pattern for oxygen. <clears throat> okay, so another bonding pattern is one that um, <clears throat> carbon loves to have four bonds. So if carbon doesn't have four bonds, it's not very, it's not, that's not a stable molecule. So <clears throat> giving carbon four bonds is usually what you're gonna see in molecules. Giving oxygen two bonds and two lone pairs is usually what you're gonna see especially in organic <clears throat> molecules. Um, uh, others are hydrogen. Hydrogen only bonds once. Halogens are typically only going to have uh, one bond. Um, <clears throat> nitrogen loves to have three bonds and one lone pair. So normally when you see nitrogen in a molecule, it's going to have three bonds and one lone pair. So if it doesn't have three bonds, one lone pair, it's probably not the best Lewis dot structure. It might be a legitimate Lewis dot structure, but it's probably not the best. Um, but sometimes there are molecules where it, it just has, you just have to write it as, as having, um, a, you know, the improper um, bonding pattern. And it could still be the, the, best, the best Lewis dot structure, but we'll, we'll go over plenty of examples. Uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, <clears throat> in the videos in the class. Okay, so uh, this is uh, example number one. Okay, so the next one I'm going to go over really quickly is uh, NH, NH4+. Plus. So with regard to NH4 plus, or uh, NH3, sorry. So we're gonna add up the uh, Lewis dot structure. So we did this one. So NH3, what's the uh, valence electrons? Uh, nitrogen is in group five, so it's got five valence electrons. Hydrogen is group one, so it's got one valence electron, but it's got, you got three of them. So you've got uh, three times one, which is three. Right, so that's going to give you a total of eight electrons to use. So uh, I have those electrons and only those electrons. Uh, now I'm going to do my uh, skeletal structure. Nitrogen is written first. It's the lesser electronegative atom. Well, in this case, I think it might actually be the more electronegative one. But in this case, the only other atom here is your hydrogen. And hydrogen is never going to be a central atom, never ever. So you only got one atom to choose from. So nitrogen is it. And it's written first. So nitrogen is going to be the uh, central atom. All the other atoms will be bonded to this. In this case, you've got hydrogen. So now that I have hydrogen, um, I subtract out the electrons I use. So I have two, four, six from the bonds. I subtract out six and I get two electrons left over. The next step is I put electrons on my outer atoms. But my outer atoms are hydrogens and they only want a duet. They only bond once, so they are happy already. So I don't need to give them an octet. So then I go to the next step and that step is to give the central atom lone pairs until you give an octet. I don't have two electrons left over, so I'm gonna just put those there. And you'll notice that nitrogen has an octet. The hydrogens have their duet. Everyone's happy. So this is the Lewis dot structure. So that's, that's it. So that's how it goes. 
Um, so I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll go over some more examples in the next one. Thanks for joining me.